Hi, welcome back to Jason Morgan Wildlife Art. Today I'm going to cover a subject that I'm asked very frequently about and that's transferring your image from the reference photo to the canvas. How do I get it accurate and, and things like that. So this video is not about um, showing a, a full drawing coming to life. It, it's really about showing different techniques that you can use to actually get that reference photo accurately onto your canvas. Now, people ask me, are these techniques cheating? I don't think so. If you look back at the, the real masters like Michelangelo, sometimes he even used a camera obscura, which is just really an old fashioned version of the projector. So if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for anybody. But if you want to draw freehand, I'll show you a few techniques for that. If you'd like to trace or use a grid method or even a modern day projector, I'll cover quite a few of those subjects. Now this video is not meant to be an in-depth drawing tutorial, it's just showing you a few tips and techniques. For each one I'll be using a graphite pencil and so what I normally do is then seal my pencil drawing with a permanent pastel and pencil fixative. I generally use this Winsor & Newton one but any particular brand will do and that just stops the pencil smudging, smearing and rubbing out when I start to use oil paints. It's just as simple as that. So hope you enjoy the video and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any other videos. Okay, this is the grid method of um, transferring an image from your reference photo over to a canvas, but in this case I'm using just some um, scrap paper just to show you the technique. So I've drawn a grid over the reference with half inch increments across the top and also across the side. I've labelled them just so you can easily see uh, the squares that I'm using on both sheets. I wouldn't normally do this on a canvas and also on a canvas it would be very light markings which would easily be painted or, or drawn over. But just to show you this technique I've gone a little bit darker. Now it's very simple. Basically I would look at a, a reference and just like a map or a grid reference, number 5C. So I'd look at 5C on this one. So it's three across and I can see that the eagle's head is just about by there, just almost intersected in the top. And in the next one, it's just about by there. And then going up, you can see it goes to about that corner dissects that corner a little bit and then it's down on the bottom and you would just go and carry on with this technique and basically it's, it's just breaking up what could be a possibly a complicated drawing into simple sections so for instance if I look at the complicated part of the eye so that's five eye funnily enough so five and then eye so this is the square I'm looking in now that eye, with all of its markings and details, can be uh, quite daunting to draw. But if I just take one square at a time, I can see that it goes from there and comes out to about there. So it's quite a large arc. So you still need to be able to draw a little bit. But this breaking down um, of each section really makes things a lot easier to draw and to understand as well. So you're not getting confused with loads of details. So I'm just going to do that little section because I want to show you other techniques. But this is the uh, standard one that you see in a, a lot of artists use, a grid technique. Obviously, I, if I wanted to scale this up or down, I would just change the scale on my canvas or piece of paper. So where I have half inch increments there. If I'd selected one inch increments and selected the same number of those mm -hmm. and on both sides then obviously this painting would have been or this drawing would have been twice the size of my reference image. So that's just easily explaining the grid method for you. Okay to transfer this time I'm using a um, computer or laptop projector so that's connected to my laptop. They're not that expensive these days. They're around about $60, about £40, up to a couple of hundred dollars. Um, 
basically I've got an image on my laptop the projector is plugged into it it's like a secondary screen and then dependent on the distance your canvas is or your your paper is from the projector the larger the image now this is probably the the nearest way or the closest way to the way that some of the masters used with the um, camera obscura so this is really a modern version of that and now it's just a case of simply taking a pencil and actually just drawing around the areas that I want so this is a very easy way and a quick way to transfer a drawing And you can put as much detail in or as little as you want. The actual flickering I'm not seeing with my eyes. That's just the, the different um, flicker or um, frame rate of the camcorder compared to the uh, projector. So I'm not actually seeing any of this flickering myself as I'm looking, looking towards it. So that's another technique that you, you could use. And this one is very quick. Okay, another method to transfer the image is by using carbon paper or tracing paper. So to do that, I would have my reference image. I'd have my canvas underneath. I'm using just normal paper. And graphite paper has a shiny side and a matte side. And to check which is the right side to put down, just test it. On a piece of paper one side will work one won't and then you just put the transfer paper underneath your image and then just push in fairly hard just trace over the outline I'm putting in as much detail or as little as you actually want and then that'll give you a, a nice outline on the canvas. You can also get transfer paper in white. So if you're painting a dark subject, something like a black leopard, or something like that, and you want to block in the underpainting, perhaps black acrylic, then you can still trace over the subject using the white transfer paper and it shows up really well this is excellent if you if you've done a drawing a quite a detailed drawing of something like a black leopard and it's got uh, spots that you can see which are normally like a, a brown color then you can block in the whole of the leopard with a matte um, acrylic before you start even painting with oils and then you can trace over the top in the white transfer paper so that you can retain the markings on top of the black and that's that's a real quick time saver and to get a nice accurate drawing as well of course you can also use more of a freehand drawing technique where you're actually just looking at your subject drawing straight from it onto the canvas or rather than do that I'd like to draw onto some paper so that any errors can be easily rubbed out and corrected and then trace from the paper to the canvas so the canvas doesn't I never rub out or anything on the canvas at all now if I was going to draw freehand I'm still looking I'm thinking of things which aid me in getting the drawing right so I don't just start and say, oh, I'm going to start painting the eye. I'll actually start to look at angles and create a shape. So I'll look at that angle there and try and create that angle on my paper. And then perhaps I'll look at an angle there or the angle there. Or perhaps down there and I'll say that straight down and I'll paint that. And I'll also combine techniques. So that I will actually 
take a measurement and I'll say okay eight inches so I know that I want to go eight inches and that will actually be the front end of the eagle and perhaps from the back it's four inches to the eye and I'll drop a line there and then I may say that the top to the bottom is six inches and I know that will go straight across so I'll, I'll do all these things that will help me get an angle and that will allow me then to actually freehand draw inside and get an accurate representation of the eagle but it's not as difficult as trying to um, just draw it line of eye so that's really combining lots of techniques it's almost like gridding and you could actually grid and say four inches is the middle so I'll draw a line up there obviously I'll be doing it a lot more accurately than I am now I'm just quickly going through it just to show you examples and I could say okay I'll have a line two inches and I'll have another one six I just extend those up and perhaps I'll have one at the top and one by there and I look at elements that are important like the mouth the beak and that part there of the mouth and then perhaps the base of the eye the top of the eye and I can take those measurements and actually plot them here is it three quarters of an inch and then when I transfer those over it's much easier to actually see for instance where the eye is going to be and I know that that size is definitely correct once you know a few things then you can much more easily work out roughly where the rest of it is going to be so so that's more of a freehand approach um, if you're really into the painting side of it and not as much into the drawing side of it perhaps you want to really just concentrate on transferring the image with a projector or really doing the grid and perhaps doing the grid with a permanent marker on some clear plastic so you haven't got to draw the grid every single time you can just overlay it and it'll save save your painting and your drawing time so you can really concentrate on the painting more but I don't think there's any um, reason why you can't use all of those techniques um, and, put, and put them together really so this is more of the freehand drawing uh, technique I hope you found this very brief introduction to transferring your drawing of some use. I've also got lots more videos on YouTube and you can also follow me on Facebook and see some great step-by-steps and paintings in progress. Speak to you all soon.